Hello fans and friends, this is Stormy with the capital Z. Welcome to game number 2 of the series that is featuring Empire Hawk, the blue human player against Lucifer, the, the grey undead player. And this matchup is going to be over Amazonia, the new map released this year as la last map as the last map as well which was last refused and in that matchup we kind of have seen a lucifer dominate completely dominate the game let's see how this game goes out we have and we have both of the players dropping down their buildings lucifer is going for the dk first build order as he has dropped the ziggurat and the altar first and he might be going for some harassment or he might go for some creeping at the green camps in front of him somewhere uh, the advisable option would be uh, harassing because DK harassing is actually better than any other and we've seen some militia rushing over there by Empire Hawk. It seems as if he wanted to go for some scouting but then changed his mind or, or he just did it for a little speed boost. I can't say if that matters though. So the Archmage will be popping out of this altar and the barracks will be coming up with the footmen popping out with the militia except militia going towards the enemy base gonna be gonna be uh, go, going there to scout out and uh, seek information over what lucifer will be going for which he is going for the dk first graveyard dropped and the tomb of relics yes it's dropped as well here will be coming out just as the dk comes in and the militia, the militia needs to get away uh, pretty soon over there. He has to survive, that is. Otherwise, he could leave it behind to just die or something. And Empire Hawk actually placing his tower at a weird location. I would not say that this is a very advisable location to place your tower as a human in your base because it can be taken out really easily. And no, it's not well. I wouldn't say it's bad right now because Empire Hawk is blocking away it Play as well. Although now. Back. It has two entrances here from here and here to be attacked but anyways let's go now as Empire Hawk goes for some sleeping for some power sleeping that is at the orange camp uh, goblin level 3 and now the DK goes for harassment as he is heading towards the enemy gonna be taking out that critter and getting those skeleton warriors up with the rod of necromancy or of necromancy sorry oh, still my I can't believe my pronunciation still sucks so much anyways now as the uh, the uh, gonna be seeing a battle over here as now the art may goes for some hitting or the dk dk turned back and now coming back going a little back and forth while his uh, his tier attack. 2 building that is the hall of that will be coming up soon enough just as he gets enough wood over there the human player sh will, sh will be doing the same thing soon enough if he doesn't decide to go for an expansion that is and as the human player takes out one of the skeleton minions, he just gets to level 2 as the archway. The DK will be going back uh, to that location and then turning back attention towards the human army. And is going to be, I might just get a steal over here with the coil. And no, no coil yet. Uh, but he will be using the, the forces over there of those uh, creeps to summon those skeleton minions. He just has two of them as the other two died over there. Human player doing pretty a uh, good job here of killing those minions, and now he's gonna be able to take out that creep. He did he did manage to steal the creep over there using that last hit uh, TK coil and uh, dark. Co it's called dead. Co oh yeah, right, dead coil. So okay. and now a fiend arrives in the battle. The fiend will be engaging right uh, right the uh, archway over there. And Archmage is forced to retreat back and he is also forced to pull in those militia. The militia are going to do a good job of defending while the footmen are trying to chase off the fiend and DK. They're doing a good job out of it with the elemental over there and now the Archmage is going to be joining that, uh, join the chase. While the Hall of that is 50% done, two more ziggurats are dropped at an interesting location there by Lucifer. Most of the end then drop it over here and make the build order like that. But this is actually a little interesting on his part. He can make one of them the uh, he can make the, like double crystal tower over there, the Norwegian tower. And the human player is not very surprisingly going for an expansion over here. The under player is constantly harassing him at the same time as well as the Alchemy just goes down to like 120 hit points. He's trying to take out the crypt over there. The crypt can do some good damage over him. The human player is almost done sleeping at this point, but the undead player is not going to be 
taking off any pressure that's just what he needs to do because if the expansion comes up the human player will be having a lot of advantages in this game but at the same time as the younger player does know that the human player is expanding he will be knowing that his checking is very very late and that will be beneficial for the under player for a for a little time there he needs to keep up the pressure he needs to get the lich out or either get a uh, and yes he's going to direct to black citadel and he's going direct to tier 3 that is and now yes he is going for a tavern hero it seems like because i don't see any lich coming from this altar yet and that's just what is very very advisable a panda a dark ranger a naga sea witch now that's a good hero choice the cold arrow will be very very much useful for the tk for nuking down those units nuking down any uh, footmen over there while well, the footmen are tending to retreat back to this under construction expansion and the invest the problem with the ex expansion is that the investment is really high and the returns i wouldn't say that the returns are equal as well unless you defend it very very well and if it kind of goes down you're you're, no, you're completely out of the game and now the under player doing some lot of units spreading over here around the human human trying to surround the hero dk at low hit points although dk can uh, dk is still at level one i have to advise there because the, because the dk is at level one he cannot use, he does not have the unholy aura as he has chosen death pearl as the first magic he, he would he himself that is and the other units will be having the speed boost and the human player is kind of successful in uh, chasing away the under player and his expansion is up and as i said the returns will be coming to him of taking that risk as he is going to keep over there the tier 2 for human and the under player tends for some sleeping over here and the surprising thing is uh, that the under player is still at level 1 even after all that creeping and seems like the human player is just rolling over here and now Kane is trying to get a surround on the Naga Sea Witch. Naga Sea Witch managed him to escape. Naga Sea Witch will be returning back and seems like it might have go down using a push of healing right on time there. And the other player is forced to like hide inside his base trying to, trying to defend himself. And at, the, at this point human player should retreat back which he is kind of doing but he's actually trying to har harass a little more. I wouldn't say that harassing at this point is very advisable because he has a low unit and over this blight, the under player just has that double advantage of the uh, unit regeneration that is uh, being gained by all of these units except the Naga Sea Witch that I have to point out. The Naga Sea Witch is not a undead Please unit, it's, it is a tavern hero. Um, there are two ta tavern heroes that are actually undead, the Pit Lord and the Dark Ranger for those who you who might not be doing and DK finally getting to level 2 getting the unholy aura which gives another regeneration boost to the undead army well, I do believe it also gives it, uh, the regeneration boost to the uh, Naga any other unit that is non undead that is the Nagasi which is also gaining the regeneration over here the human player now re regenerating a little staying outside that camp where the undead player is to be can I hear a goblin shredder somewhere he is using a goblin shredder to uh, mine out some trees there oh just chop some wood uh, rather I think not mine out and that shredder is actually a very good def defense unit and they, now human this is what I meant by having a good defense he's actually setting up like uh, five, six, tower, seven towers over here, and it, it, it's practically impossible to get through them at the undead current and the uh, the undead current state. And the and the human player, and yes, this is the defense I was talking about. The human player now getting the oh, two level tier two and getting the MK out, and now the undead they are getting tier two and getting the lich out as well. The undead they are having three hero combination and will be able to nuke down the unit very, very well over there. Human player might should have uh, second thoughts on retreating and trying to re recover from the damage and well I wouldn't say that harassing with this small of an army would be very advisable. The MK is coming and I would say that if we should we should be like kind of waiting until the MK arrives before launching in some serious damage because the MK can really do some good. Um, uh, one thing that I have noticed a little and I would say in this at this point in this scenario type is that if you go for an expansion it is rather good to get a tavern hero because that actually can be get instantly and because Players you go for an expansion as a human player uh, for an early expansion that is you your taking is late as your taking is late your second hero is late your uh, tier 2 units are late and wh why not rather get a tavern hero 
the humans they can do very very well with the naga siege with um, the panda brewmaster and the blue and the naga siege can be really dominant and anyway the pan anyway the mk that is mountain king is ready here and will be creeping with the human army at the orange camp and now the undead player will be oh, thinking of launching an attack inside the human base and the human player well uh, and the humans are actually dropping down griffin avery's those griffin avery's are going to be popping up some uh, good flying units which, uh, which are, are going to be just dominating away the undead army and see, th let's see if the undead, undead did actually ignore the group i'm pretty sure he did but let's See, yes, yes, yes. He did. He did. He does see one of the one of the building animation of the Griffiner Avery, and he should be uh, thinking of getting the web research soon. Yes, he is getting the web, and also getting the destroyer form upgrade for the Obsidian statues to evolve into destroyers. And now the human player going to the mid attack. mid section, which staying a while. Going down, and the undead player will be creeping at the at his expansion point. While the human player goes for the creeping at the orange point in front of his base, that is. And he's going to be letting his MK get all the experience as he is pulling back the art mate. And well, the human player seems to be at a pretty stable point. He can't be taken out uh, unless the undead makes some siege units, some very powerful units, that is. And the human player can creep out to uh, like gain some good experience and items from the free floor there. He might even go for the red camp over there. Although it will be hard to creep with uh, his current status that is his third unit composition. And there's an illusion. Illusion will be going and, and detecting that the underfloor is going for an, ex an expansion. And the arch and well that was the, the archmage which died, that was the rich renegade wizard and the human was forced to TP back as he as his, all of the units are dead and he's entering really mid the middle of the creep creeping there. And their player will be uh, picking off the pieces, will be taking out the creep and he was there. Whoa, that's not good, that is very bad. The shredder just turned against the human player. If the undead player finds out that this whole place is like empty, he could easily go from the air and the enter inside to deal some good amount of damage to those workers over there and believe me that won't be good for the human player and uh, now uh, the human player getting his third hero the paladin also getting griffin riders plus spell breakers which probably are the best units that he can think of at the point although he does not have anything to counter away the destroyers uh, but at the end of the player won't be having many destroyers now before he attacks, it would be okay, I guess, because he does have two of these obsidian statues at the moment. The Wizard Rider number one is ready, and here from the illusion of the DK, he's gonna be attacking the Paladin. Oh my, Paladin will be taken out very easily over here due to the undead new thing, and there it goes down. Human player had some not very good microing over there, and now actually creating illusions of himself. The MP that is, and now pulling in some militias. Militias, oh my, very bad. He's completely targeting out that illusion, but the under player did the same thing. And oh my, very good surround over there. Oh, the DK, DK is completely surrounded and gonna be taken out. I know oh my, using the TP at the last second. One more hit by all those units, and it would have been GG for the under player. And now the under player TPing back to his base it will be re rejuvenated, recuperating from where he left behind and actually gonna be going for some creeping right away uh undead player can actually do this just because they of the re of, the, of that uh this aura what we call it unholy aura right unholy aura because it grants the extra regeneration to the, all of the units and they can actually uh like fast regen and go for some other thing even after getting even after like uh getting hit from a coming back from a hard battle that is as the paladin comes back, the human player should be thinking of getting some potion of invulnerability for the paladin. That is, because the paladin actually can use that holy light to save the other heroes, but the paladin does not have anything to save himself unless he gets to level two and gets the uh, uh, divine armor. And now here are a few good number of griffin riders. They are going to be doing some massive damage to the undead army. And as you can see, the human player targeting away those. Uh, Obsidian statues and um, abominations coming up. Abomination will be taken out easily though from the Griffin Riders. 
the internet is being webbed down in the end of four to TP once again. You know, will be able to uh, manage to take out the. I don't think he, he took out the abomination. No, he didn't. Abomination is alive with 10 hit points there. And is rejuvenating fast because of that aura. And now, actually, the under player has gained a second very good seen. advantage to his army. He, he just got Scourge of Moonshine, which gives you Empiric Aura. That's like you get some amount of hit points back for the damage you dealt. And Demon Player is actually going for the expansion of the under player, was going to get set up a tower here. Uh, the under player is actually in a very bad condition, and the human player looking good. He might just be able to take this game away with uh, with this uh, his play over here, with his strategies, and now actually going over the lich, just taking out the man of heroes. There goes down the TK. There goes down the lich, and now the uh, paladin might just go down. No paladin using push from uh, that not not push from the that divine armor. Sorry. And now he will be taking out the unit one by one, and I guess this is pretty much GG for the undead player. And the well, the MP were kind of well, almost dead there as well, but using pressure in one with GG WP by Lucifer. A really great game played by both players. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, so